What's up, lovers of whiskey and watchers of YouTube? I am the malt activist, and I am back after a brief hiatus. Uh, I don't know how many of you noticed, but I was away for about uh, roughly a month on a very well-deserved break, and so I'm super happy to be back making videos on whiskey and sharing the knowledge. Now, with this video, I want to do something a little different. So here are my five whiskeys that caught my eye in the year 2021. Now, if you're wondering, isn't it a bit too early to do a top five for 2021? Well, who cares? You can do a top five whenever you feel like. But the thing is, these are whiskeys that caught my eye this year. Now, I am in the envious position of being part of probably the world's most busiest whiskey club, MSA, the Malt Society Arabia. I will put all the links down below if you want to be a part of that club. But basically what happens is we have maybe between two and three tastings in a month right? Uh, sometimes over Zoom, sometimes in person at a bar. And what that does is I get to taste between 10, 12, maybe up to 15 new expressions every single month, which is a lot, you know, not just for the casual drinker, even for <laughs> even for a YouTuber, a whiskey YouTuber like mine, getting to sample 15 new expressions every single month, which is amazing. So what I've done is these are whiskeys that uh, I've tasted during uh, our tasting sessions with MSA and I'm just picking five of those that caught my eye. Uh, it's not to say that they're very newly released. Uh, some of them are, but, but these are the ones that just caught my eye and, uh, and I just want to share them with you. There you go. Okay, on to number one. Our first whiskey is from the Isle of Arran. You guessed it, this is the Arran Quarter Cask. Now, I first had this whiskey when I was visiting Switzerland, Interlaken actually, and I sat at a bar and I wanted to try something that was uh, cast strength. So the, so the guy behind the counter gave me this and I fell in love. I hadn't had it before and that was my first time having it. And it was called the Bothy. Uh, the quarter cast Bothy, it was called. It was in the old bottle. This is the this is the new one, and uh, I think it was a similar strength, 56.2% ABV, and this is matured in a way that I love my whiskies. Uh, so seven years in first fill bourbon, and then a couple of years in quarter cask American oak, and that's what you have. This lovely 56.2% ABV natural cast strength quarter cask. It has such a lovely fresh nose, I really like that. Um, so I've taken all my notes down. So uh, citrus, very uh, very fruity, uh, citrusy fruity, uh, lots of creamy vanilla and apples. It has its grassy notes and almonds as well. Touch of alcohol and varnish. I think that 56.2% is really, really playing into the nose here. A bit oaky, lots of coconut and nutmeg. Some heathery notes, very, very woody. But overall, I think, you know, very, very nice nose. I quite like it. It's uh, it's available at a decent price as well. I'll put the price up here now. Uh, so uh, yeah, this is my first pick for 2021. <sighs> wow, yes, very nice. Um, so uh, sweet fruity notes again, uh, especially pineapple, pear, lemon candy, uh, and then going into a more sort of zesty grapefruit and citrusy, uh, overtones there. Uh, there's uh, there's a hint of chili, some ginger, candied ginger maybe, uh, and that coconut uh, is back uh, with a touch of oak, uh, which I like. Uh, and you know what? I really like the high strength. Ooh, yeah, I really like the high strength. I think it really amps up all the flavors for me. So yeah, the um, uh, the Aaron, uh, the Aaron Quarter Cask. Uh, in this uh, nice new packaging, uh, find it, find it, buy it, uh, drink it, and uh, tell uh, tell uh, Aaron that I said hi. Our next whiskey is not a Scotch. It's uh, from Wales. Yes, you've guessed it. It's the Penderin. 
and this is the port word again had at a whiskey tasting for my club this was Ooh. this was the undisputed champion of the evening everyone liked this particular bottle we had five other expressions oh actually four other expressions but this one came out on top and i have to agree matured in ex bourbon barrels and for about 12 months uh finished off in uh port barriques portuguese port barriques okay what do we have here quite syrupy on the nose milk coffee and dark chocolate ah, strawberries that cream toffee butterscotch dates ooh very what's the abv on this does it say of course it has to say 46 percent 46 percent abv honey and some treacle in there as well nice nose yeah 46 percent pretty big on the mouth um uh, good flavors again it's that it's that creamy toffee and vanilla and the caramel and the treacle and the butterscotch and the frappuccino that comes through very very strongly ah uh, i like this big finish um bigger than the aaron actually which is like 10 10 percent abv more than this one but this is a good solid whiskey uh, again i think very decently priced and uh, i will put up the price right up here uh so yes find it buy it drink it all of the above this is a good dram our third whiskey comes from loch lomond this is the 14 year old we did a series of uh, Loch Lomonds for this tasting. We had a couple of 12 years old. We had a couple of 14 year olds and there was something else as well. And I don't remember, but this 14 year old is the one that, um, that caught my eye, uh, largely because of its uh, maturation, which is kind of, you know, uh, up my alley, really matured in refill American oak cast before being finished in French oak from the limousine region. So, Yes, this is the kind of maturation I like. As long as it hits some first fill bourbon and then you can go finish it off in something spicy like the French oak. So I'm quite happy with that. Nice natural color. All of them natural color, by the way. What does it say? Finished in French oak from the limousine region for up to 12 months. These lightly toasted casts are made especially for Loch Lomond. I like the nose, very, very crisp. Lots of green apple, pear, sweet toffee and vanilla mixed with grapefruit and citrus. Touch a very gentle smoke, just a hint of warming nice smoke. And subdued spices. Nice, easy delivery. A little bit of spice very flavorful quite robust bottled at 46 percent which i like so far all the whiskeys we've tasted are above 46 percent and that's the way whiskey should be bottled uh, i call bullshit on 40 percent and 43 percent whiskeys die okay yes so lovely so flavorful huge finish mouth is pinging um underrated whiskey again very very reasonable Please go and find it. This is what the bottle looks like. It says fruit and cinnamon on it. This is the Loch Lomond 14 year old. Find it, buy it, drink it. Our fourth whiskey comes from Tamdu. This is the 15 year old. Now I'm going to be super honest. 10 years ago, when I first drank a Tamdu, I was not impressed. I was like, this is eh, so devoid of character. Why? Why do, why do people make whiskeys like this? And I was upset. I was upset with the world. And I said, I'll never drink a Tamdu again until I got some free Tamdu for a tasting. And that completely changed my mind. Not because it's free, come on. But the fact 
that they've done something notably different in the last 10 years or so and which has really impacted the spirit in a good way and I'm happy about that. So what do we have here? This is, let's look at the maturation. Exclusively matured in Sherry Ocas natural color. Okay, good. Sherry Ocas just means um, Olorosa Sherry Cusks. Probably like a blending of second, uh, first, second and third fill. Nothing wrong with that. Good nose, quite crisp. What do we have here? Um, dry fruits, hint of oranges, uh, dried apricots, earthy vanilla, uh, cedar, hint of leather and cinnamon on the nose. Mm. Very, very palatable. Um, uh, quite warming, uh, quite oily, uh, like a chocolate ice cream. A bit waxy as well, lots of clothes, very, very Christmassy. Um, what's the ABV on this? Also 46%, not sure if I mentioned that. 46%, very easy to drink, almost it can be your daily drinker as well. And again, I like the fact that it's reasonable and this is what the price will be. And that is reasonable and it's available quite easily. So please uh, find it, buy it and drink it. Our last and final whiskey is an anomaly because it is a whiskey from London. It's not a scotch. This is the Bimber Recharge Cask. My first Bimber was like a year and a half ago. Uh, my friend brought it for a tasting and I was like, oh, okay, that's not too bad. But then we had a proper tasting with the brand ambassador guys. And uh, we, had a, we had a bunch of single casks, which were actually quite amazing. And then finally we have, oh, this is also a single cask. This is a rechard cask, which is, uh, I don't know why you would say rechard cask, because don't you have to rechard, I mean, I don't know. And it's matured in the finest rechard oak cask. So I'm going to guess first fill bourbon cask, sort of heavily charred. Um, yeah, American oak cask, that's what it says. I don't see any sherry over here, unless it's written somewhere. But it seems like this is like a, you know, first fill bourbon cask, a heavily recharged to make it super, super active. And this is what you get. And what I'm super, super impressed about is the fact that this whiskey is three years and a day, which is absolutely stunning. Uh, it says the bottling date is 23rd October, 2020. It's bottled at 58.4% cask strength. Wow, this does not smell like a three-year-old whiskey. This smells like a very, very accomplished whiskey and I'm super impressed about that. Yes, very, very fruity on the nose. Peaches, red berries, oranges. And then I get more of the cask, the black pepper, the caramel, some nuts. This is complex stuff, guys. Very, very unique and an extremely unique nose. What awesome, awesome body on the palate the texture is fantastic treacle uh, and fresh uh, red fruits and white chocolate and fudge and chopped nuts and strawberry jam with some vanilla and caramel and uh, some nutmegs uh, wow very well defined flavors extremely unique in its delivery and overall composition wow I am a huge fan of this uh, distillery and if this is the kind of whiskeys that they're producing at three years and a day, God damn it. I, I just can't wait for them to really start producing age stuff because it is going to be off the hook. Wow. So yeah, thank you. So there you have it. There you have it. My five whiskeys of 2021. Hopefully uh, you found something in there that you, that you like, that you could get your hands on. And my advice is, uh, go out there, um, find it, buy it, drink it, uh, send me a dram, drop me a note, uh, tell me that you love me, uh, it's great. Uh, and I'm so happy to be back. Uh, please leave a comment below, tell me which one you, you liked best if you've uh, had any of these. Uh, like my videos, man, that, that just makes a lot of difference. And subscribe, and then like, why aren't you subscribing? You have to subscribe, I'm doing all this for you. I'm drinking all this whiskey just for you. So thank you, thank you for joining me for this whiskey review. I hope you found something valuable in here. 
Until next time, I am The Malt Activist. Peace. Thank you.